Welcoming our sister with showers and praising the Lord in the style that the Lord is speaking to you. I don't want to say we are going to welcome her in African way. But can we welcome her as the Lord is speaking to you? Show flowers. Then can we shower the rain? Shower, shower. I'm very transparent in leadership. And the older I get, the more I realize how transparency is what the Lord desires. The enemy hides behind secrets. He hides behind lies. He hides behind rumors. So the Lord has been teaching me there's nothing you should be able to talk about in secret that you should not be able to talk about in open and so I decided to take this time to address some structure changes in Numbayana Viyansi. I have spoken to Apostle about these instructions. I've spoken very little to Ruto, very little because this is a new ministry so I have to prepare him. But the fullness you guys are getting the same time. Apostle is the only one who has has knows of, knows about these things and has approved. Ten years ago, the Lord gave me a dream. In this dream, someone handed me an African baby. It was so real that when I woke up, I thought I was going to adopt a child from Africa. I told my husband, I think we're going to have an African child. He said, we are done having children. I said, I'm sorry, I feel like we're going to have an African child. I, I told my pastor, Pastor, I, I had this dream. I think I'm going to adopt a child from Africa. He said, okay. And then Pastor Antonio he called me a few weeks later he said I'm coming from Brazil I need to talk to you he flew all the way from Brazil to have lunch with me and at that lunch meeting he said the Lord has told me to give you the ministry in Africa. And in that moment, I knew it was the Lord. So I went to my pastor because I am not the ultimate decision maker in any ministry. My senior pastor is my ultimate authority. The order is God, my husband, my pastor, and then I, I oversee many ministries around the world. I asked my pastor, is this okay if CCWC takes Numbayana Fianzi? He said, I don't even have to pray. I know this is God. So when you take a, an adopted baby, a baby that you did not raise on your own, when you have your own child, no matter what that child looks like, it's beautiful. No matter how that child acts, that child is still good. No matter what that child does, you will protect and defend that child. 
But when you adopt something that is not from you, <laughs> you start noticing the problems it carries. <laughs> when you adopt a child, <laughs> when it acts up, <laughs> you don't push it away. You've chosen to love that child. If that child has a debt, you've, cho you've chosen to pay that debt. If that child has struggles or is hungry, you've chosen to take care of those needs. I will stand before you because those who have been with me for 19 years you know that I love you but I will tell you this it has not been easy it's been very hard every time I come here a majority of this ministry for me dealing with this problem there's gossip here this church is angry people are fighting there's not been unity they're not submitting to authority and so I get with the apostle I got with counselor John we get on our knees and cry out to the Lord and the Lord always makes a way so it has not been easy but the fruit has been worth it but every time I come the Lord gives us new vision we are growing quickly look how much we've grown just since Apostle has been in leadership this is amazing but we still are trying to put things together in proper order and it takes structure so I want to talk about some changes that are going to happen immediately this is going to be a year of discipleship for pastors and leaders strong discipleship discipleship that not just apostle is going to be a part of but I am going to be a part of as well I want you to I want you to know not to boast for myself but to give you security I have been blessed to serve under really amazing leaders I have excelled in leadership because of my training by the giftings of the Holy Spirit and the training that he has put me under the Lord has given me the ability to solve problems really quickly because of training so I ask myself Lord if you could just put me in Africa for one year I will spend all of my time making disciples of the pastors leadership training growth in businesses growth in finances but the Lord has not done that but my pastor when I was speaking to him he says there has to be a way Angie other than sending you to move to Africa he said what if you meet with the pastors weekly yourself and I said how am I going to do that he says how do you meet with apostle on Thursdays I said we get on video chat we, we Bible study we go through businesses we stay close he said well why can't you do that with all of the pastors I said 
That's impossible. They don't have smartphones. And my pastor said, I want to buy every pastor a smartphone. So this is good news and bad news. The good news is, we are going to be so close. I there will be no more secrets. From now on, when I visit, I will already know everything. The bad news is, is that I'm going to know everything. And I'm going to deal with it quickly. Okay? When you have when the pastor has a smartphone, the meetings are mandatory. The meetings are mandatory. That means starting very soon, maybe in June. Apostle is going to get with the regional directors. And on Thursdays. We are going to have a pastor's meeting. Each region once a month. And, and you will know when that meeting is. You will know when your schedule is. So you can't say, Oh, I couldn't have Wi-Fi. Oh, I had to work. Oh, something happened at my farm. If you have many excuses, then maybe you should not be a leader. When I tell you I'm going to come down hard, I mean it. Because we are growing quickly and we need to grow as leaders. Apostle will make sure he gets with every pastor. If you already have a smartphone, you are not getting a new smartphone. Okay. But if you have a smartphone that is broken and it is no longer in use, get with your regional director and we will make sure that it works. If you are not living near good network, find an area where there is network and be at your meeting. When I was in deep in the bush, I was able to call my pastor on FaceTime. And it worked. Sometimes it would cut out. And I would call right back. So you will have time. It's only once a month. And at these meetings, we'll talk later about it in detail. But you'll be required to give reports about prayer meetings, about evangelism, all of the requirements for the ministry. A lot of you have not been giving your regional directors reports. I am not going to chastise you right now for that. But that's disappointing. Because you were giving an assignment and you did not do it. So instead of going into that, I'm going to see for myself how obedient you can be if you cannot submit to authority listen when I tell you you will be removed from the ministry I want to make something clear I do not fear man I don't care if you like me I don't care if you're mad at me I fear one one who is able to take a life and cast it into hell 
Jesus Christ. He's the one I serve. You can ask Apostle and even Jackie and Ruto. They've said things to me. Sister, listen. If you do this, if we make this decision, oh, people are not going to be happy. And what do I say? That's not how I lead. I follow one. And his name is Jesus Christ. The ministry is for the people. Our calling as pastors and leaders is to work for the ministry. Not to lay around and just preach on Sunday. But to be with the people, to, to pray hard, to study the word, to open our Bibles and preach the word of God, and not preach our own thoughts and ideas, but to preach the word. Amen. So be excited. We will be dealing with that today. Change takes pressure. When there's change, it puts pressure on the leadership. So I want you to pray for your leaders. I've already told this to them. I've already said this to them. I told Apostle and I've told Pastor Ruto be prepared I'm going to be very strong on you because of the requirements of the Lord that he's put on me so I ask you as pastors and leaders support your leaders do not push back do not gossip and complain because if I hear about it I will cut it from the ministry if you say to me well how can you do that how can you cut me from the ministry how can you cut me as the pastor away from my church how can you cut me as a, as a worship leader or a congregation from a church I've been going to for years well let me read to you what the word of God says it is in forgive me I think it's in the book of... Ah. This is not my normal Bible. Chapter 18. I'm going to read it, and you can translate. Verse 15. If another belie believer sins against you, Go privately and point out their offense. If the other person listens and confesses, you have won that person back. But if you are unsuccessful, take one or two others with you and go back again. So that everything you say is confirmed by two or three witnesses. If that person still refuses to listen, take your case to the church. It's telling me to do exactly what I'm doing right now. Because everyone that I've had a problem with, I have already spoken to you privately. You know who you are. Apostle has already spoken to you with Ruto or another leader. You know who you are. So I'm taking it to the church so that you cannot say something Something that is not true any longer. I want you to listen very clearly. If he or she 
won't accept the church's decision treat that person as a pagan or a corrupt tax collector do you understand? this is how we must lead openly honest I will tell you again my family that's been here with me for a long time and our new family that we have just been with for two years gossip will not be tolerated complaining about leadership will not be tolerated when a leader asks you to submit to a rule of the ministry and you push back it will not be tolerated God is the one who delegates every authority so God God does not need us to do anything. We get to serve him. It is a privilege to serve the Lord. If I am cut out of the ministry, someone else will rise up and replace me. So none of us here are irreplaceable. So we can't think too highly of ourselves. If you want to be in the ministry, the gossip must stop. And you must submit to your leadership. I want to talk about two changes that are happening immediately in two of our churches. I'm talking about these publicly so there's no confusion. Two of our churches right now in this ministry do not have senior pastors. And this must change. With the guidance of the Lord, we are going to temporarily turn these two churches into training centers. They are still churches. It's still the house of the Lord. But the church can't govern itself. It needs a leader. So we're going to turn them into homes for, of Bible studies. The first church I want to address is Karyo Church. The pastor, we love him. He was available when we needed him. But the work ended up being too much for him. It was far away and it, it was just too much he only came to service once a month and a lot of times when he preached the word it was from his own understanding and not the Bible being opened one of the things we will be discussing in this leadership training is preaching the word of God we can add our own ideas but we the word of God is what changes lives not our own ideas his heart was good his intentions were good but he wasn't available for the church to grow but God is still so good that church is still growing and it's growing fast and even they're teaching themselves the word of God 
So we removed that pastor from the church yesterday. And we gave the goats and the things that belong to the church to the community to take care of the church. And then, and then we know a woman, Sister Esther, she was introduced earlier. She has known the Lord for a long time before she moved to Pokot. And her testimony is pretty mighty but she's willing to host weekly Bible studies at Cario Church and the beautiful thing is that when she speaks to me I can hear scripture coming out and I listen for these things because what goes in is what comes out if anybody speaks to me for more than five minutes they know I'm reading my Bible that should be that way with all of us she is not the pastor of the church she is not the leader of the church she is going to lead Bible studies on Sunday and my heart is to send people from other churches to carry as other Bible study leaders to bless them because one of the requirements for next year is every pastor is to have two Timothys two Timothys two men they're training up people they are training up to lead the ministry one day these Timothys are to get the pulpit every once in a while I talked to a pastor last night and he said I have a Timothy but he's going to come after me he said not before me after me and I, I said no if he doesn't preach before you how will you know if he's good enough to leave behind so you let him preach you, you look at his notes you see how much he studied and when he preaches you take notes then you meet with him you should read more scripture you ask people to open their bibles train them up but it would be good if our churches would send your Timothys to carry out church give them an opportunity to preach to a congregation these are some of the plans that we have someone, someone will be in contact you, with you even if you yourself go there to preach to put you on a schedule but the Lord always provides. Amen. The second church that's going to have changes immediately. Moist Bridge Church. Now this church is close to my heart. Because my brother and counselor John Kimayo started this church but this church has been through many changes and change is hard some of the leadership had fell away and it wasn't the congregation's fault but the congregation suffered from it pastors when you fall your whole congregation hurts so as you lead as, as you are leading you lead for your families and also your congregation changes happen in this church because the enemy hates this church he wants it to fall it's a powerful church and he doesn't want it to work 
Rumors started stirring in this church. A lot of gossip in this church. And I'm not mad at this church. But just like the book of Matthew that I read, I have spoken to these people. I know our leadership has spoken to these people. Even John Camayo, when he was the apostle, spoke to these people. And nothing has changed. Lies have stirred. I want to even confront one recent lie that I heard. And, and I already spoke to the person it was lied about and he said, this is not true. Last, I heard that last Sunday, Silas got from the pulpit and claimed himself the pastor. This is not true. I had someone ask Silas and Silas said no I would not say that this is how rumors happen because Silas is not the pastor of this church in fact I placed a pastor in this church a very capable pastor in this church and when I left the congregation removed the pastor no one gave anyone authority to remove a pastor this will not be tolerated anymore we submit to uh, the delegated authority I promise you it will end well. We are right now scouting for a new pastor for Moist Bridge Church. It will be someone that God puts in front of us. It will be someone that the church loves. And it will be a man that loves the word of God. But until then, the church is going to be a training and prayer center. This, just like Kario Church, will be a place we send Timothys to preach the word of God. That we send pastors to preach the word of God when they let Timothys preach in their own church. And for the next six to seven months, we, we will be watching these pastors. We'll watch their lives. We'll watch how they preach. And, and we'll let the Lord decide. I, had, I invited uh, Counselor John Kimayo to this meeting. He doesn't know this yet. But I trust his leadership. And I plan to ask him if he will just be eyes for me. If, if he will watch the pastors that preach. And, and watch the congregation. And let us know if it will be a good fit. He won't make the decision. But Moist Bridge is his church. So I know he will give good advice. Also, while we are there, training pastors, I also want it to be a place of training worship leaders. I have spoken to so many people that have the gift of leadership, that have a voice to sing, and they've not been given a time to do it. As leaders, we will not 
press down God's giftings. But we will let them operate in their giftings. As long as it's done decently and in order. So I'm going to put someone in charge of organizing a worship rotation. I have someone in mind. I haven't spoken to them yet. But it's someone I've known for a long time and I trust. I know they're faithful to the leadership. I know they're not a gossip. And I think they'll do a good job. Now, for anyone that has any problems with these changes, even those that have been part of the division and destruction of Moist Bridge. I say this in love for the church. You have two choices. You can repent and choose to submit to leadership or you can be removed from the church permanently because division will not be allowed. It is a poison, it is a cancer, and it is a plan of the enemy to destroy the church. You have been spoken to. I won't call you. She now is part of our ministry. We get to have this woman as part of our ministry. And in the, in the seasons to come, you will hear from her more. So let's give Pastor Pamela a hand clap. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. 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 Amen.